Before applying wood protection, check the wood to identify spots where you need to remove loose fibers, paint, and peeling wood. South and west facing facades are more exposed and are typically more worn down. Scrape and sand off the loose particles. We've used grit 100 in this video, but try out different levels of grit before you sand. If a screwdriver can be easily inserted into the wood, it's time to replace it. If you apply wood protection on decayed wood, you'll never get a good result, because the wood protection will peel off. Before applying wood protection on previously treated surfaces, you need to clean the wood thoroughly in order to create a good surface for the treatment. Dilute the cleaner with water and spray or scrub it onto the surface. After a few minutes, rinse with water. We do not recommend using a high pressure cleaner as this will in fact push the dirt into the wood instead of cleaning it. Before you start, make a tape test to show if the wood is ready for treatment. Put tape directly on the wood and pull it off again. If you can see loose wood fibers on the tape, you need to sand again. Recheck by repeating the tape test. When you're satisfied with the result, you can begin the treatment. Forget about painting neatly and precisely around lamps, hinges, drain pipes, etc. Applying outdoor wood protection is not exactly precision work. It's much quicker to remove fixtures as the application will be faster and afterwards they will not be rimmed with colored wood protection. Use good quality masking tape and plastic lined covering felt. Holes, after knots, screws and nails, can be annoying because the wood protection will fill the hole and later it will run out again and create thick stripes on the surface. Make sure to check from time to time to avoid stripes. If you want to be certain of a good result, make sure the moisture content in the wood is not above 18% when you apply. If there's more moisture in the wood, it can create blotches in the final result, and over time the wood protection can peel off completely. Good tools are important, so don't go cheap on the paintbrushes. It's important to have a good wide brush for the large surfaces, and a smaller brush for difficult areas. The weather can play tricks in many ways. On a moist autumn day, the air can create a fine dew in the early evening. This will make newly applied wood protection ugly and matte. On a hot and sunny day, wood protection dries too quickly, which might cause large bubbles on the surface. It's tempting just to get on with the business of applying the wood protection, but in the long run it pays off to use a wood preservative as base coat. The preservative penetrates deep into the wood and protects effectively against fungi, mold, insects, and termites. Make sure to apply extra coats on end grain. Now you're ready to apply the wood protection of your choice. The choice is wide and you'll need to decide whether you want an opaque wood protector or a translucent, which leaves the wood grain visible. You can also choose between solvent-based and water-based products. All are available in a large variety of colors. Normally, you should apply at least two coats of wood protection. Make sure to apply extra coats on end grain. Don't put away your tools just yet. When you check the result the next day, you may discover that repair is needed. Perhaps you even want to apply one more coat. 
This is easily done now that you have everything at hand.